three-man band Renegade, featuring Joe Castle, Pete McCuster, and Joe Baldy, have been highlighting Portsmouth clubs for almost five years. Renegade has recently finished cutting two singles. We caught up with them at the Meadowbrook Lounge. Joe, could you tell me a little bit about how the band got started? Well, Joey and I, the guitar player, had previously played in a band called Badger, and uh, we were playing a circuit mostly in western New England, and you know we reached into a few of the, the other states, New Hampshire and Vermont, whatever. Peter was also in a band that was playing the same circuit at the time that was called uh, Taxi. Um, and of course, we had run into each other you know, during the course of events. When both the bands expired, we decided that we wanted to get something together with, you know, with Peter as the drummer uh, and Joey and I coming out of the band before that. So it just uh, just took off from there. We had, at the beginning, we had a keyboard player and a lead singer. And uh, the keyboard players never quite worked out. And we dropped keyboards, went to a four-piece band. And then the original lead singer got married and settled down, and we tried another guy after him, and it just wasn't right because we were, you know, too set in our ways. And so here we are. So since you've taken over the role of lead vocalist, right? Uh, more or less, we we share the lead vocals, but I do a majority of it now. Mm -hmm. Anything that has influenced you as far as your lead vocals? Well, my main influences, uh, as far as singing is concerned, was mostly soul music. Um, I grew up in Boston. I was in a nine-piece soul band, and uh, you know, we did a lot of uh, Otis Redding and Wilson mm -hmm. Pickett and Aretha Franklin and the whole bit. So that's where most of my singing uh, style, I guess, would, would have come from. What influences your songwriting? Everyday life. Uh, you more or less get put up against the wall just about every day on the road. A lot of people don't realize just how involved being away from home five days a week can be. Uh, having to find some kind of normality mm -hmm. in, a, in a, you know, a totally chaotic situation. Uh, the people you work for vary so much from place to place. Uh, some people are absolutely wonderful, they'll do anything for you. Other people don't even want to know your first name. Uh, and, uh, you know, those kind of real life situations can conjure up some very vivid uh, scenes in your mind you know, projections or whatever, and uh, you just, you know, transpose them onto paper. Where did the name Renegade come from? Well, that's, that's a question if you ask any band, uh, how did they come about their name? They're going to say, we racked our heads for days and nights and nights and days, and then gave up. <laughs> but, but there wasn't a case with us. We were in the process of racking our brains. We went through two or three dictionaries, and, you know, we went through um, botany books, you know, flowers have nice names, anything we, we thought might have a ring to it. Or, and we were sitting around the table after sucking down about 10 or 12 cups of coffee apiece and pretty well wired out. And, and at the time, Mad Man Across the Water had just come out, the Elton John album, and, uh, and he does uh, a number in there called Indian Sunset, I believe. And he, he's singing about the trials and tribulations of, uh, of the Indians, and uh, he was singing about... Um, about the renegades involved in, in the separation of the Indians and from the white man. And uh, the feel, the way he was singing, the fact we were probably pretty wired out on copy, and, and the feel, uh, the sound of the name as he sang it in the feel was, was something that just gr sort of grabbed a hold of us. We were sitting around the coffee with all these books, a table, a coffee table, excuse me, with all these books and stuff around, and, uh, and the name renegade just came across the stereo speakers, and it was... Uh, it was easy to grab onto for us. It was something we could relate to. Mm -hmm. um, there's no real specific reason for choosing the name other than the fact that it felt good for us. Now, personally, you write a number of the songs for Renegade. Where do you have your influence? Well, my influence is basically English. Um, the English always seem to do everything they did with a certain amount more of uh, integrity and, and uh, intensity and um, Diligence. They just seem to be the English musicians. At, for me, seem to be the musicians that that were playing music to make or break. They were um, they were setting the trends and and they were. Um, it was life or death for them. The, the English economy is is 
so tight that, that music was a very valid way out for, for a young Englishman. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like it was very important to do whatever you did very intensely if you were English. And, and it came across. It, it, we're in the United States, we were losing our direction a little bit at that time musically where my influences come from the Beatles or oh. or the Rolling Stones or the Who or whatever you know and uh, that's where my influences are they're with most of the English groups uh. <laughs> This is uh, a pretty exciting moment, I guess, in the history of Renegade because of the fact you've had some songs now actually recorded, a couple of 45s released. Uh, how can you sort of get a, a hold on the growth of Renegade and where would you like to see the band in another five years? Well, Renegade learns very quickly. Uh, as a group, we learn from each other and we learn a lot about our experiences in the studio. We learn very, very quickly about our strong points and our, sh and our shortcomings in our music as we listen to them, as we've heard them after they're produced and on record and everything. And uh, I, it wouldn't take a whole lot more for us to get involved in, in some more studio work to very quickly find our exact niche musically and, and head out into the, the big world, per mm -hmm. se, you know. Um, the, the, the radio waves across the U.S. completely. Um, we we would like to have crossover hits, top 40 crossover hits, good solid albums where you see like when you introduce a new band into the industry, it's not particularly a given song that the audiences pick up on, it's the band sound. Now if you can break with a given song, um, Foreigner would be a prime example, the, you know, the way Foreigner broke with, with, with one of their hits and then their sound was there. Then, the, then the, your listening audience picks up on your sound. Mm -hmm. After that, if your music is commercial enough to follow through, let's say on a given album, on a, on a first album even, and they've picked up on your sound, then you can consequently, if you're writing in that vein, uh, 2.5, three minutes tunes on an album that, that could be aired on, on the, let's say, crossover, AM, FM, crossover, you, um, 
could potentially have a number of hits off of a given album because your audience is in tune to your sound. Uh, for us, it's, it's this is basically what we're immediately shooting for. We're not shooting for like a one hit um, album deal and then work our way to another album, try to get a couple hits out. Right off the bat, we're writing the material on the album with intent to have po the potential for each individual number on the album to potentially be released AM or FM as singles. And uh, that's what we're shooting for. Pete, tell me a little bit about your background. When did you start playing drums? Oh, I started when I was about 14. Who, 13 or 14. Who was your main influence? I didn't have any main influence. Uh, I just wanted to play, and uh, I listened to a lot of people. <laughs> I understand that some of the places that you've been, people haven't believed that you're part of the band. Yeah, I, I have a lot of trouble in that <laughs> respect. Well, I don't know why. I have no idea, but I've, I've always been questioned at a number of doors. Do you have any stories that you could relate? Well, one time I walked into a club and uh, down in Massachusetts. I was the last one in from the band and they stopped me at the door and they wanted an ID and I tried to tell them. I wasn't in my playing outfit and I was trying to tell them that I'm in the <laughs> band and they didn't believe me and I had to have a couple of the guys in the band come over and it was, uh, it was funny. And that's happened more than once. Now you're on the road a good number of, uh, you know, a good number of weeks out of the year. Is uh, is that hard work? Yes, it is. Yeah. Anytime you're away from home is is hard if it's for a number of of days or weeks at a time. Do you uh, enjoy coming to the Meadowbrook Lounge? Oh yeah, we always we always do. We've been playing here since about two weeks after the band began. Um, it's kind of a traditional thing for us when we come in here. It's very predictable in the sense that we know uh, within certain parameters what to expect. We know the crowd is going to react a certain way at least up to a certain point. But the nice thing about the Meadowbrook is that um, they always surprise us. Every time we come back, it, it always seems to get a little bit more intense. And uh, every time we leave, we always say to ourselves, geez, uh, we wish the reaction in every club that we played could be that good 